What do you think when you hear the word mummy? A lot of people imagine mummies who come alive in horror movies. Are mummies really that scary? Well, you are about to find out. I'm Cassandra Shaw of Scholastic Kids Trust Corps. I'm reporting from the California Science Center in Los Angeles, California. Follow me today as we're about to enter the world of mummies. With me today is Diane Pearl of the California Science Center, Vice President for Exhibits. In my sixth grade textbook, the only place where I ever mentioned mummies was in the section on ancient Egypt. But now, thanks to this Mummies of the World exhibit, I now know that not only do mummies come from ancient Egypt, but from all over the world. So where are some of these mummies from? Well, we have mummies on display from Peru. Um, and what's amazing is the ones from Peru are much older than the ones from Egypt. In fact, we have mummies on display from um, all over South America and from Europe as well. So why do people tend to think that mummies only come from Egypt? Well, I think because people have been fascinated with by ancient Egypt for so long, and they had a lot of these elaborate um, ceremonies and, and uh, embalmed them in such beautiful ways. Um, but a lot of the mummies we have on display were not intentionally mummified. They were accidentally mummified. Yeah, I've seen those mummies, those natural mummies, right? I understand that attendance has been fantastic since the opening in June. Why is Mummies of the World such a big hit? Well, I think mummies have long fascinated people, and um, in part it's because mummies are such an anomaly. They're, they're so unusual. You know, the usual rule is um, organic matter lives, eventually dies, and decays. So it's unusual for something to be mummified. And people uh, are not only fascinated by that, but also because they're, uh, especially with the human mummies, I think people can see themselves in those mummies, and that fascinates people. So you're saying that they have, they share a likeness with the mummies, right? So how many mummies and artifacts are on display? Well, we have 45 uh, mummies on display, both animal mummies and human mummies, and then dozens of related artifacts, both from you know burial finds and other types of related objects. It must be challenging to gather so many mummies from all over the world. Can you tell us about some of these challenges? Yes, the, um, the mummies come from 21 different museums all over Europe, which was really amazing. And some of them have never before been out of their museums in Europe. One of the things that enticed the museums to loan the objects were that each one of these mummies would undergo some sort of scientific analysis, like uh, dating or uh, DNA testing or some scientific analysis to learn more about them. And then this information would be shared with the, with the home museum. So that was really an incentive for them to, to loan the objects and the specimens. What is the most significant thing you want people to learn from mummies of the world? I think there's a number of things. We want people to better understand that mummies don't come from ancient, just come from ancient Egypt, that they come from all over the world. And then we also want people to learn the role of science and how these new science tools like uh, dating and MRIs and CAT scans and x-rays, that they're letting us study mummies without destroying them. In the past, mummies would be torn apart to, you know, when people would, would collect them. Um, and now we can study them and look inside them without damaging them so they're preserved for, for the rest of eternity. Every mummy gives insight to its life. Which mummy do you think is, has the most fascinating story? Well, a lot of them have fascinating stories. To me, the mummies that are, are, are one of the most fascinating ones is the ones from um, Hungary. And these are the mummies, uh, like the Orlovitz family, in which they were found to have, uh, have suffered from tuberculosis. So since the TB DNA is still in them, scientists can go in and extract some of this uh, DNA from TB to try to find some, maybe some uh, medicine that is not uh, resistant to tuberculosis now and can help, perhaps help hold the clue to solving some persistent diseases that we have now. Which mummy do you think was the most interesting? Um, I thought the Coptic kid, the baby, was interesting. Why did you think it was the most interesting? Because since it was a baby and I wondered how it died and got mummified. What did you expect from this exhibition? Uh, I expected to learn a lot about mummies, which I did. Uh, I learned what it was like for them, uh, how they were embalmed in the process, where their body parts were put, 
and I also learned about the afterlife of the mummies. Cool. In this exhibition, you have seen so many mummies with different stories to tell. Which mummy do you think is the most fascinating mummy? I actually think it's one of the uh, weasel mummies because the animals, the fact that they cared so much about the animals to embalm them and put them in mummy form and protect them in the afterlife is one of the most interesting features to me. I'm Cassandra Shaw, Scholastic Kids Rest Corps, and I'm reporting from the California Science Center in Los Angeles, California. Thank you.